value trades, forex, CFDs, and commodities. Okay, good uh, Good evening, everybody. I've seen there we've just uh, got the last uh, few people there just uh, joining us. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Good evening. It's uh, Wednesday, 31st of January, 2018. Already, we're already through the first month of uh, 2018. Time is is flying by. Uh, I'm uh, Paul Wallace, and here we are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, the sort of first this year of uh, Value Trade series of uh, webinars. And and this year we've got a uh, a whole selection of fascinating topics to to sort of educate you with and also uh, maybe entertain and and help also give you a little bit of insight into you know how uh, professional traders are are engaging with the market you'll probably see uh, plenty of um, notification on the the value trades website about the sort of the the range of topics and the dates upon which the uh, value trades team will be uh, sort of uh, talking to you over the uh, over the coming 12 months uh, I'll be doing some of those uh, myself and I'm looking forward to being able to sort of share my experience and and knowledge with you but uh, for this evening's session ladies and gentlemen what we're going to talk about is an introduction to price action trading price action trading some of you on the call may uh, well be aware of it for some of you who are maybe new to trading you know it might be a, a completely uh, a new idea a new concept and i'm hoping that by the end of this session i will have given you some uh, some fascinating insight and a little bit of education that will help you develop your own sort of price action trading ideas but before I uh, kick into that, as always, I'm just going to start with a quick risk disclaimer. I'm, I'm hoping that you can uh, all see my screen at the moment. If you could just uh, ping and let us know, that would be fantastic. Make sure that uh, we're all sort of seeing the, uh, the the same elements that uh, that always uh, that always helps me. <laughs> it always uh, makes sure that we have a, a thing. So uh, thank you, Hans. I see Hans can hear the audio and hit see the uh, slides. Thank you, Hans. I, I appreciate that. It's nice to know I'm uh, not here on my uh, not here on my own. So, uh, but as I said, before we uh, kick into the meat of our session, we begin with a quick risk disclaimer. CFDs and FX are leveraged products and carry a high level of risk to your capital. It is possible to lose more than your initial deposit, and you may be required to make further payments. These products may not be suitable for all clients, so please ensure you fully understand the risks involved. So, there we go. Let's move on and let's talk about uh, some trading ideas. And as I said, we're going to talk about price action trading this evening. So what, what am I going to cover today? Well, as the name implies, I'm going to give you an introduction to price action trading. I'm going to talk about what it actually means, why people do it, or why people don't involve price action trading in their own uh, decisions and, and looking about you know how we use price action trading to be able to make decisions as, as private traders primarily based on recent price movements and i'll touch upon you know throughout the whole session the uh, the advantages to uh, to price action trading then if there's time at the end i'll see if i can uh, flip across and actually have a look at the uh, value trades meta trader for platform and have a look at its charts if there is if there is time uh, as always if you have any questions through it just uh, fire them out i'll be very very happy to uh, help you where i can and uh, you know sort of just give you some little bit of guidance i i appreciate that you know sometimes when we uh, listen to these uh, webinar sessions that sometimes maybe the the questions don't hit us straight away but if you if you're watching this you know later or if you're watching this on demand in in the future then by all means if you have questions you know don't be afraid to get in touch with your value trades account representative and they'll be they'll be very happy to help guide you and answer any of the particular questions that you have here that they're, they're, they're they are willing and able to 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 help you there so uh, hans has uh, not wasting any time there is uh is he's asking me already what indicators do i uh, do i need for price action trade and do we cover that and i'm i'm very happy to tell you uh, hans that yes we're going to be we're going to be uh, covering all of that. It's an introduction. It's a uh, so I'm going to give you a, you know sort of take it from the most sort of let's say the basic levels of price action trading. But by the end of the session, I would hope that you'll be able to take away just a little little four or five step plan that would allow you to basically just you know start price action trading from tomorrow when you open a chart. You know what would you be doing? And that's what I like to try and do when I'm uh, sort of doing these sessions. You know, give you some insight and some advice that you can take away and start using from tomorrow and that you can actually sort of you know sort of embed into your own trading ideas concepts and plan so what is price action trading 
Well, you know, there's lots of uh, descriptions about it. You know, I'm sure you can look through uh, all sorts of uh, online uh, material to get the uh, the sort of the most clearest and academic of uh, definitions. But realistically, you know, what we talk about it is it's the discipline of making all of your trading decisions from a stripped down or, or a naked price chart. And we'll uh, look at that a little bit more in a few slides on. What we realize as traders is that price action, you know, when markets move, it leaves a footprint that we can use to help make our trading decisions. So I appreciate if you're a completely new trader, that might not necessarily make too much sense right now. But I would hope by the end of our session, you'll be able to have a, an understanding of that and to see how we can use that to make our trading decisions. Most importantly, we're not looking to use any lagging indicators. And I'm definitely going to sort of talk about that. I'm going to talk about why, you know, we uh, sort of trade price action without indicators. What are the benefits? What are maybe some of the, the challenges and why we do what, how it can actually help you with your trading decisions. So what else does price action trading involve? Well, one of the good things for private traders is that it also ignores the fundamental factors of an instrument and looks primarily at the instrument's price history. So it is a form of technical analysis, but it also includes behavioral analysis of market participants as a crowd from the evidence displayed in this price action. And if you want the most basic of understanding, price action is simply how price changes. So why is that interesting or useful to, to a private trader? Well, what you have to realize is that, you know, we are private traders. You know, we are we are not a bank. We are not a hedge fund. We you know like a bank has three or four floors full of 100 and 200 people on each floor that they can use as analysts to, to under sort of go through very, very deep and thorough analysis through all the sort of fundamental factors of a particular instrument. Most of us, as so let's say private traders, we, you know, we don't have access to that particular resource. So what we need is a, is a way and a means to be able to make our trading decisions. You know, and when we talk about trading, you know, very often, and, and I myself have, have been guilty of this, is that we sometimes overcomplicate it. And actually, all we're really looking to do as private traders is find a way to make a simple decision. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to sit on my hands? It's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. I have to make one of those three decisions. And actually, there is a great beauty in being able to come to that decision in a very simple and elegant manner. Human beings, and I, you know, particularly men, and as I said myself, we, we like to overcomplicate things. Whereas, in fact, actually, what we need to do is just to make it as easy as possible to make some simple, good trading decisions. And the price actions on the chart, as I said, it gives it almost like a behavior analysis. We get a little bit of an insight into the sort of crowd side from that evidence and all of this builds up creates a picture and allows us to make very very good trading decisions so why is it useful take a look at this chart ladies and gentlemen well you know here i've called this kind of a messy indicate indicator laden chart so you know i you know within my own practice where you know i work with traders from all sort of uh, broad spectrums you know, very often I'll have traders who will contact me and talk about how they're struggling to make trading decisions. They're, they're just gripped with fear. They have complete analysis paralysis and, and they just don't know what to do. So I tell them, go on then, send me across a chart. Let me have a little look at what you're looking at. And they send me a chart, something like this. OK, normally something like this and say, you know, Paul, I, I just I just can't, you know, I can't make a decision. I don't I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to buy or to sell. And even with my sort of 15, 16, 17 years experience, I look at that chart and, and I'm no wiser to actually what actually needs to happen. All right. I'm no wiser than when I look at a chart like that. OK, there's charts and then it has Bollinger Bands. It has about seven different moving averages and they'll have parabolic uh, SAR. It'll have, you know, the AD, ADX, the sort of RSI, the MACD, the stochastics, the, the CCI. OK, a whole spread of sort of indicators. And invariably, it just becomes it's a little bit of overwhelm. I'll give you a little bit of a, a little bit of insight in that, you know, human beings, human beings tend to be able to, to sort of cope with taking on somewhere between about five to nine bits of data at one time. OK, anything more than that. And, and, and we just go tilt. We just you know, we, we our ability to sort of make decisions degrades very, very rapidly. 
So when, you know, when I see charts like this, you know, and, and I hear traders either A, failing or not being able to make decisions on what to do, it becomes, you know, it's very simple. It's very understandable because invariably they're just overwhelmed. They're absolutely overwhelmed with data and they're not able to make one of those three simple decisions. Should I be a buyer? Should I be a seller? Should I just sit on the sidelines? So, you know, if you haven't already, if you're, you know, just starting out as trading, maybe have a little look at, you know, what your present day charts look like. OK, are they, you know, are they are they like this at the moment? Is is that one of the things that's maybe causing you to scratch your head from uh, from now and then? All right. It's a it's a case of, you know, you know, you wouldn't be alone. You know, people do this. OK, people do that. But, you know, what I'm going to do is show you, you know, uh, show you another path, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe some of you already have charts like this. Maybe some of you, you know, have uh, have, have realized that, you know, so uh, it's a it's a case of, uh, you know, you know, hopefully this will be a, a session of enlightenment for you all. But hopefully, you know, as I said, you can look at that chart and wonder, you know, what, what what do I do here? There's just so much going on. There's just far too much. You know, it's just becomes it becomes, you know, confusing, conflicting more than anything else. So why do people try and trade like that? Why do people have charts that have got like 25 different indicators on them? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of trading insight, sort of, let's say, a little bit of behavioral sort of trading psychology. That the reason that people, new traders, have all of those indicators on is that they uh, they treat them a bit like a comfort blanket, right? Why do they do that? Well, they, they just hope that it keeps them safe. They hope that it keeps them secure. They hope that if they have 20 different indicators on their chart, that, you know, at that one single point that, you know, where all of those 20 indicators line up together, well, they think that must be a dead cert trade. That must be an absolute, you know, dead cert, 100% trade. Basically, they're hoping that all of that, those indicators will help them avoid taking a loss. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, sadly, I have to tell you, this never helps. What tends to happen is people take, you know, a couple of losses in trading, which happens to all of us, even me, all of us take losses in trading. And people think that the answer is to add more and more and more indicators. And I'm actually here to tell you that the, the opposite is true and that there is a beauty in that sort of simple concept of less is more. So if you're looking at your charts and you've got about 20 indicators on, maybe this is a chance, an opportunity for you to have a little conversation with yourself as to, you know, how your charts have become so busy, how they've become so noisy and really, truly look at, you know, is that actually helping you? If I could to give you one little very simple coaching uh, technique to take away from, look at your charts and always be looking to see what can I take off them, not what I can add to them. As opposed to, okay, here, a, a naked price action chart, all right? Just a very, very simple one. There's nothing on that chart. You know, we have price identified here as candlesticks. For, for those of you who are completely new to trading, you know, you can choose on the MetaTrader platform to have price identified as, as a line drawing or as a bar or as these you can see as a, as a candlestick. And, you know, in here, I have very, very simple, you know, it's just a, a green candle is a, is a bullish one, or, you know, blue one is a, is a bearish one. The sort of in the, the, uh, the separate and the line are just an indication of separating the, the months there. Each of those candlesticks is, is, a, is equivalent to a day, a single trading day. So hopefully maybe you can see that, you know, that is a, is a lot more clearer, a lot simpler, all right, than uh, than the chart we just looked at a couple of slides back, which is just overwhelmed. It's just far too much data going on. What we want to do is to be able to look at very, very simple, very, very, you know, clear charts because it makes it easier for us to make a decision. So how can price action trading sort of help us as private traders? Well, you know, I touched upon there an element that, you know, less is more. Less is most definitely <laughs> more. OK, as I said, look at your present charts and look to take off as much as you can. One of the reasons we're able to do that is because we have fundamental beliefs that basically all of the news, all of the present known news about the market is what traders would call is baked into the price. The price is the price. That, that might sound 
awfully simplistic. It might sound as if I'm teaching to suck eggs, but the reality is the price is the price, okay? The price of that particular instrument is, you know, is the present market's indication of that value, you know? And they've already sort of taken into account any of the kind of known future news, all right? And so the price is the price. When we look at charts like that, simple, naked charts, it makes it quicker and easier to analyze the chart. And I'm going to give you a few little hints and tips on how to do that better as we go through. It also makes it easier to make those trading decisions. Remember that. Remember that. It's very, very simple. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to sit in my hands? It's just one of those three simple decisions to begin with. And what it does is it also helps that analysis paralysis, avoid that, okay? They're sort of deer in the headlights like the picture there, okay? I'm sure, you know, those of you who've been trading for a you know, short while will have experienced that at some point. Everybody will have, you know, that doesn't, uh, that's not a unique experience. Everybody will have experienced that. And very often it's just a case of, you know, when there's just so much data coming at you, you're not able to make a decision, you know, and you, and you just freeze. Or, or alternatively, you you know you just act like uh, like a you know sort of a a, a wild mad uh, piano player and you're just pushing the keys left, right, and centre. Uh, neither of them is a terribly good way to to engage with the with the markets. Uh, and what I'm here to do is to give you some very very simple steps to help you understand a price action chart and start to utilise that to make simple trading decisions. So I hope that's for, uh, giving you a little bit of insight so far. And as, as we, you know, as we go through, we'll it, it'll build slide by slide. But simply, you know, there we go. We have we have the the those two charts there. Okay, we've got the top one, the messy, you know, a sort of indicator laden one, and the the sort of the clear naked chart beneath. And and hopefully you can both sort of see within those charts that you know it's it's much clearer and easier to see what is going on in that chart you know once you have a bit of a clear understanding of what's happening you're able to analyze that market well then you're then you're in a better place to be able to make some quick decisions about you know how how you're going to trade that particular market so what i'm here today to do is to sort of you know uh, em help you with sort of embrace naked trading which is a different concept from trading naked. Um, but uh, tonight we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to encourage you to throw off the constraints of all those hundreds of indicators on your charts and embrace naked trading, right? But not surprisingly, I'm not just going to, you know, sort of throw you into the gladiator pit on your own. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, some, uh, some teaching about it. So, you know, where and how can we start upon that? So let's keep it simple. You'll find I like to do that, keeping it simple as a trader. And we'll begin with a few simple steps as we uh, as we go through. So one of the kind of underlying principles and one of the great strengths of price action trading is that it is what I would define as time frame agnostic and instrument agnostic. What does that actually mean? It means that it doesn't matter about the time frame of what you're trading. It doesn't matter whether you're trading a, you know, a monthly chart or a one minute chart. Price action trading is valid. It doesn't matter about the instrument. It doesn't matter whether you're an FX trader on euro dollar or whether you are a commodities trader on gold or whether you are looking to trade cryptocurrencies or whether you like to trade the indexes, something like the DAX. Okay, In terms of the instrument, it is agnostic. Price action works across all instruments and across all time frames. And as private traders, that helps us a great deal. It gives us a, a very, uh, let's say, ubiquitous uh, skill set that, uh, you know, that we're able to sort of employ upon all markets. However, what I'm going to do today and what I and what I recommend for sort of new traders is to, you know, we're going to focus mostly on using the monthly, weekly and daily charts and we'll focus on sort of the daily charts as, as a part of an end of day trading. You know, I'm going to make a, a small presumption that quite a few of you as private traders are probably trading around a, a particular day job. So you may only have, you know, a, an hour or two at the sort of uh, at the start and the end of the day to sort of place your trades. But, you know, what I talk about whilst we focus on that, it, it is, as I said, it is equally valid if you're a sort of aggressive, you know, one minute scalper. OK, you know, the, the actual concepts and ideas, they, they, you know, they work across all time frames and instruments. And that's that's what gives it some of its great strength. So here we go. Here's five, you know, very, very simple steps to, to get us started with price action trading. And I'm, I'm going to go through them each, you know, one by one. Um, step one, we're going to talk about defining levels of support and resistance. And why does that become important to us as, as uh, price action traders? 
Step two, well, you know, once we've done that, I want to define if there is a trend within that instrument and I'll touch upon that. Then step three, well, you know, I'm looking for a confluence of events. And part of that is about waiting for price to see how it reacts at those particular levels. And when we see that price reacting at those particular levels, well, it might provide us with a few very simple price action signals that allow us to make that trading decision to be a buyer, a seller or sit in our hands. And one of the other step fives is, you know, being whether it's part of a, uh, a larger chart pattern, which is not something we're going to touch upon tonight. What we'll do is we'll look to cover that as a sort of follow on in, in future webinars. But, you know, even just following these first four steps will give you a fantastic, simple process to be able to follow to get you started tomorrow in terms of, you know, looking at markets through the prism of price action trading. So uh, Hans has uh, asked if uh, we can take a, a screenshot. Well, yes, um, you can take a screenshot if you if you wish, Hans. But uh, also, you know, the video, uh, the webinar is being Ordered, and what you'll find is that value trades will uh, prevent their existence. Step one, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with being very simple and defining levels of support and resistance. How do we do it? Well, actually, you know, and you know, what we do is very simply is we look at the monthly, the weekly, and the daily charts. And start to draw in horizontal levels of support and resistance. And there's my MetaTrader pinging away in the background. Um, you know, it, I'm going to explain it here, and then we'll do a little bit of time at the end. We'll quickly go through, you know, having a look at it on the actual platform. Okay, so, so that makes it a little bit a little bit easy once you can see it put into into to true existence. So we're looking at kind of monthly, weekly, and daily charts. Okay, to draw in horizontal levels of support and resistance. But we can also use psychological round numbers. You'll find that humans are quite lazy, right? Humans are quite lazy. And so you'll see when you look at an instrument that people will just play a pound against the dirty, okay? You know, we... we use simple psychological round numbers because we, you know, we round up. If those of you are completely new to trading, I understand there will be a few here there who, who are new to us. Well, then, you know, what we're looking to do is is also to, to basically you can use something called fractals to, to help you. And this is really just a little tool to, to be able to, to help completely new traders. And that's what we're liking to we're trying to do to try and make it just a little bit simpler for those of us who are who are completely new. And, you know, please, if you have questions, you know, fire up. We, I, I don't mind. I enjoy them. We have to remember is, you know, we were all be beginners at one stage okay we were all beginners on this on this journey so what are fractals well firstly i'll show you how to find them on the actual uh, value trades meta trader 4 platform so uh, here i've just taken a little screenshot myself and you can see under the insert tab then you'll go down to indicators then you'll go down to a uh, uh, bill williams he's a chap who wrote books on uh, trading chaos very, very good books to, to read. Uh, and fractals are uh, one of his indicators. So you can follow that, choose that, and you can put them on the charts. What does that actually mean? What does that actually represent phenomena? Okay. And actually fractals are something that's kind of tells that have the what does that mean? Um,
been jumping on the connection. So uh, super. It's telling me that we're all uh, we're all back in the room. Okay, that's uh, and I'm pleased to. I'm uh, very pleased to hear that. But as I said, fractals are price action phenomena, and what that happen is they're. Made up of five candles, and I'm just going to try and see if I can uh, use the drawing to it. I can show you I'm a far better trader than I am uh, an artist. But here we have, as I said, it's uh, made up of five candles. Okay, uh, and here we have an up fractal. And what does that mean? Is an up fractal is where the high, okay, of the candle is higher than the two candles before, and also it's higher than the two candles that appear after it. So we have almost like an upturned V. Hopefully you can see that. On the flip side, a down fractal is where the low of the candle, the lowest candle, is lower than the two candles before. And it's also lower than the two, the lows of the two candles afterwards. So actually, and what happens is, you know, you can perhaps maybe see that little triangle is there. The, the indicator prints that little arrow there, that little applet on the top there but remember it doesn't do that until this fifth candle has closed click and that fifth candle closes they'll automatically put it in there and it's just a simple price action phenomenon there we have a v bottom there we have a top v so that's just a little simple thing and i'm going to show you now you know what actually implies how that actually helps us how that you know how that works with us as as, as traders you know what does it uh, what does it you know what does it give us but hopefully you can see that And once you get a, an idea, you know, once you actually happen across all the charts, okay, they happen across all charts and all time frames, and they can be very, very useful tools. And fra trading fractals in there, that we can talk about. You see, um, what is a little, uh, little, it's a little jittery there, isn't it? It's uh, um, what I like to see is when price action chart. When I, uh, when I particularly, when I particularly start to see, okay, that quite I have few fractals, quite a few fractals there, okay, at a particular. Uh, Let's call it a you know a level a zone that gives me increased confidence that the sort of the you know the, you've seen I've just drawn in a level there that gives me increased confidence okay that that is an important support and resistance level that becomes quite important to me yeah I apologise that for that Franz the, uh, the the sound seems to be uh, dropping in a little a little in and out and, that, and I, I do I do apologise for that it's the uh, yeah the sort of uh, the, the 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 joys of the internet there I, I apologise. Just hopefully you're all uh, back with me. You're, you know, you're back in the room and able to to, to listen. Uh, and uh, as I was saying, just that when I feel a very similar place, all of a sudden. Similar location, it gives me increased sort of that yourselves there. Once we've gone on step one and, and draw in our levels of support and
That's right, Asim. Yes, I'm fair. I'm just trying to close. Uh, apart from really, uh, um, apart from really the, the kind of the, the slides and the meta trader, that's uh, pretty much closed to uh, everything else. So I think it's just uh, a little case of the the internet is being a little bit, a uh, little bit jittery. So I. Uh, I apologise for that. It's a yeah, uh, um, I know, but as I said, you know the the uh, recorded, and you know you'll be able to get a, a copy of that to be able to to watch. Hopefully, it'll all uh, well. So what we do is we want to actually look to define the trend. We want to actually look to, to you know, having drawn in our levels of support and resistance. We want our ability to, to effectively trade with the trend. That's what we're looking to do. So how do we define a trend? Well, once again, we're actually just going to use simple price action to be able to help define the trend. Some of you will have heard of being able to use higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend. Some of you will have heard about using lower lows and lower highs for a downtrend. For some of you, that might be completely new uh, information or might be a new idea. And I've got a few slides here to actually help show, you know, where we can get that, uh, you know, how we use that, how we develop that. So we'll talk about, you know, that a little bit. And what, what we're looking at is how we look at understanding, you know, when is a market trending? Or when is a market consolidating? Here we have just a, a, a clear, simple chart. Okay, as you can see, there's 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 no indicators on there. We have a, we have fractals drawn in there, but hopefully you can very clearly see when the market was trending and when it was actually consolidating. You can actually see this. Oops, you can see this weekly chart between about. North. And actually, we're going to talk about understanding those higher highs and higher lows on the on the next couple of slides. Let me give you a little bit of very very simple. Let me just give you a, a, a simple little bit of advice. It could be gold. It could be bonds. It could be it could be pound against the yen. It doesn't actually really matter what it is. A good trend will leap off the screen at you. If you're looking at a chart and you're not sure if the market is in a trend, I'll give you a bit of advice. It's probably not in a trend. Good trends like this one you see here in front of you on the the weekly DAX. Okay, the you know the trend leaps off the chart. You it becomes very clear. Remember what I said a few slides back that human beings, we try to overcomplicate what we see with our trading. And actually, that's not what we want. What we want to do is we want to keep it nice and simple. When we can see a market going sideways, we, you know, we, you know, we know that market's consolidating. As you develop in your trading abilities, you'll be able to sort of learn how to trade those particular range bound periods. But what we'll also be able to do is recognize and identify when we have those lovely trending periods those good trending periods will leap off the chart they'll leap off you you won't be able to miss them and that as a let's say as a you know as a beginning price action trader that's what we're looking to do we're looking to sort of trade when that you know with the dominant trend that's what we're looking to achieve constantly 
So, you know, I talked a little bit about, you know, higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower highs, and how also fractals can maybe help you with that if you're a completely new trader. What we have here is this this is a monthly chart of gold. And hopefully you can see, you know, we, we drew down here is that, you know, as the price has been moving down, you can see price. We know price doesn't move in a straight line. Price moves in a zigzag back and forth. And as you can see, you know, as it's sort of creating the, the you can see fractals there. What we can see and very clear is that, you know, you know, if I just use the pen here, is that what we can see here is that every time we're having a fractal form, what we're go doing is it's a lower high, isn't it? And hopefully that's giving you just a little bit of indication, okay, that we're getting lower highs. We're also getting lower lows as well. And that's just confirming that, you know, price is in a downtrend. Price is in a downtrend, okay, until it reaches, not surprisingly, it reaches a particular level. And then actually when we see price trade up through that recent fractal, that's the indication that that downtrend is now complete. So hopefully you can see that, you know, very clearly on that sort of, uh, you know, with using those fractals, just looking at the price chart. And this was a monthly chart. OK, so this was taking its time. It had the opportunity for it to just to wind its way down slowly, but surely, slowly, but surely until it hit its uh, particular level. In this case, it was a thousand fifty, which was a quite a significant level in uh, in gold at that time. And then price reacted and moved away from it. And once it broke through that uh, previous high fractal that gave us an indication that that downtrend was over and the market was ready to move in a different direction for the short period of time here we have you know how we can start to, to define a trend and also a little bit of how fractals can help us with that what we're looking at here is a chart of the pound against the the dollar on the the, the weekly what I'll do is I'll just draw in here. You know, probably you can see this. You know, the 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 huge the huge candle here. That was uh, sort of a Brexit. Okay, that was the uh, the day, the week, the aftermath of Brexit. And we can see that you know we we know we we hit down at the uh, real uh, real lows there. Okay, in fact, this was actually more after the uh, sort of Chinese flash crash that happened. That was the uh, the Brexit move there. We had a Chinese flash crash. Some of you will uh, some of you will remember it. But then price went price went basically sideways for a good while. Price went sideways for a good few months. And then what we can see here is that price was basically started to make here. We made a higher low. Then we made a higher high. Then we made higher low, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Here, another higher low. And as you can see, price has just been continuing. And this, as I said, this is on the weekly chart, okay? This is very weekly chart. So this is something that, you know, it isn't changing minute by minute, second by second. It's the thing you can do, you know, at the end of your day around your, your day job. Sort of thing you can do, you know, take an hour or two of your weekend to just do your analysis. Hopefully, you know, it becomes very clear, as I said, you're very simple and clear to see that, you know, when a trend, it leaps off the page at you. You don't have to go and try hunting. You don't have to go and try sort of, you know, uh, chasing it. You just actually just... Just make yourself, you know, available to what's happening there. Just look and see. And as I said, the good trends, they leap off the page at you. Thank you, Hans. Yep, Hans said it's uh, it's it's very clear, Paul. And thank you. Then, as I said, that's the message to try and get across to you. When you're looking, you know, when you're looking, let's say these naked try naked charts to do price action trading, you're just looking at, you know, look for the nice trends. You know, they will find they will leap off the page at you, and that is the first part of being able to sort of identify. Well, how can I trade this? Hopefully, you can see, you know, see that chart just nicely moving. You know, price never moves in a straight line. Okay, price never moves in a straight line. It will always, you know, go in and move in a zigzag. But you know, that zigzag is is useful to us. That's useful information that can help us. And you know, we're going to look at that in the next couple of slides about how we turn that sort of uh, that movement into a trading opportunity for us. So step one was to draw on our levels of support and resistance. Step two, define the trend. And as I said, if the trend isn't leaping off the page yet, there probably isn't one. And so the price is consolidating. And for the moment, for the moment, for this, for the introduction to price action trading, we just want to be looking for charts that have a nice trend. 
Step three is, well, what we're looking to do is to see how that price reacts at those key support and resistance levels. And those support and resistance levels, remember, they can also include psychological numbers, big psychological numbers, 1, 120, 110, 140, 150. We'll look at them in a little bit more detail as we uh, look at the charts. Why am I looking for these particular levels? Because what I'm trying to do is to, is to identify a confluence of events, okay? confluence of events i want you to to basically sire that uh, that sort of uh, that statement to, to your to your trading brain we're looking for a confluence of events and what does that mean i'm really i'm looking for two or three things all to happen to come together at one point and that is what is going to give me my uh, trading decision very very simple and we'll just look at that a little bit more in the next few charts and this is where price action setups start to actually help us as well but to keep this very simple for you, all right, to keep this very, very simple, as I said, don't try and overcomplicate it. Keep it as simple as when markets are bullish. So when markets are going up, you want to be a buyer. When markets are bearish or going down, you want to be a seller. You want to define the trend and trade with the trend. If there's no trend, there's no trade. And if there's no signal, if there's no trade. You know, and, and I'd actually, you know, for those of you new to trading, I'd say take a snapshot of that chart, okay? Take a snapshot of this page, print it off, stick it up on your wall right in front of your trading decision. It might seem quite simplistic, but you'll have absolutely, you know, no idea that lots and lots of people try and overcomplicate it. They try and make it more difficult than it needs to be. When markets are going up, you want to be a buyer. When markets are going down, you want to be a seller. Define that trend and trade with it, all right? Very, very simple advice, but it's the kind of advice that will keep you on the right side of the tracks more often than not. And that is what we're looking to try and achieve. So we look to draw on our level of support resistance. We look to define a trend if there is one. We look to see, you know, where does price look at, you know, how it reacts at particular levels that, you know, that we're able to identify beforehand. And at those levels, we're looking for some price action signals. And they can be very, very simple patterns. And that's what we'll talk about tonight. You may have heard the words before, things like pin bars, engulfing candles or inside bars. Just very simple, simple patterns that are defined from price action that we can use to give us the trigger, the sort of the trigger that gets us into the trade. So the first one is a pin bar. It's a very, very frequent pattern, okay? Very frequent pattern. Lots of people know about them. And it gives us a great indication of supply and demand, which we'll touch upon in, in you know, in, in, or we'll go into more depth in future webinars. Very clear and easy to see them on, uh, on charts. Many people trade them. Not all like I would trade them, but tonight we're just gonna tonight we're gonna keep it simple. Tonight we're just gonna be you know keep it simple and basic and look at how a trader you know would identify them in order to be able to to utilize that for their own particular uh, trading decisions. Why is it called a pin bar? Uh, very simply, it's after the character Pinocchio. Some of you may remember from childhood. Whenever Pinocchio told lies, his nose got bigger and bigger and bigger. In the markets. It's kind of like the pin bar is lying. And what's it doing is, well, it's lying about the, the direction or the sort of uh, of the market over the next few sessions. Wherever the sort of that pin is pointing, there's a good chance the market is going to go the opposite way for the next couple of sessions. And that can help us. So a pin bar, to, uh, I'd be identified as a pin bar there. You know, we've got bullish and bearish. The open and close okay, of that uh, candle should be within the previous candle. And most importantly is that the candle wick should be two to three times the length of the body. The pin, okay, the pin element should be two to three times the length of the body. And these are kind of very nice examples, small little clear bodies with nice big tails, nice big wicks. And ideally you'd like it, you know, the nose protruding from uh, the other bars, all right, with an exception which we'll touch upon in, in a little bit later. And a little bit like trends, okay? The best pin bars are going to stick out on a very, very obvious. What do those pins do? Okay, remember what I was saying they're lying about it? Well, the reason I, I view them as lying is that what they're doing is they're giving us an indication of where the biggest predators are lurking in the market. And it shows rejection of a particular area or a particular direction. So as a private trader, it's, it's pointless to try and fight that. Don't fight that. Use them. Utilize them. Let them help you to show you, you know, where the likely short term direction is for the next few candles, because that can give us a good trading idea. 
So here you go. Here's, here's another sort of uh, uh, slide. You can take a screenshot, stick it up on your chart. If you've never seen a pin bar before, here are some fantastic examples. The one on the far right, not so much. Why? Do, well, just think about it. Remember what we talked about. We want the sort of we want the the, the wick, the pin, to be two to three times the the body. Now the one here on the sort of the the second from the right, you know, the body is probably about half the size. But we're looking at bullish examples. I can see the price opened. Let me just draw it in here, make it even easier. I can see the price opened here. Price pushes down. A price came back and compact the way it opened and it closed all the way up right on its highs. That's very, very bullish. Okay. It's very bullish price uh, action. I like to see that if I'm looking to be a buyer. Whereas here, what we look at is you no know, price uh, opened here, price moved down. And then, yes, it did come back, but it didn't come back fully okay here the bull uh, sorry the the bulls are not in control the bears are still in control and that doesn't help me if i want to be a buyer that's not what i'm that's not what i'm uh, particularly looking for on this chart when i'm looking for pin bars and here's the bearish examples all right so just you know what am i looking for a, a bearish example well you know if i just look at it what i'd be doing is expecting price to be zigzagging up okay zigzagging up and then create something like this, a very nice bearish pin bar. And then I'm expecting price to, to move away from it. And that's, you know, that's another good example. This one isn't. OK, that one isn't. Why isn't it? Well, because, you know, price opens here. Price pushes up. It comes back, but it closes here. It closes higher than it opened. All right. You know, the wick isn't big enough. The bulls are still in control. The bulls are still in control there. And that's no use to me, not when I'm looking to be a seller. So, as I said, you know, it shows rejection of a particular area or, or direction, you know, and as a private trader, don't fight them. And they can either be traded as a pinball reversal. You, know, you can see there, OK, you know, that's a that's a, you know, that's a that's a big V there we can have. You know, we had a pinball there, OK, all right? You can see price came all the way down and it reversed it and price went all the way up. Hopefully, they, you know, you will have also seen that that was also a fractal as well because it was lower than the uh, the two before and it also lower than the two after it. So we have a we have a fractal there. Okay, that'll be a level of because that becomes of interest to us in the in the future. Or, as opposed to trading as a reversal, what they can be traded as, as a as a pin bar continuation. You'll hear me talk about. Okay, as we see here. What I'm showing you here is, you know, showing you this is an uptrend. Hopefully you can see it very clearly on the naked trading. And what we have here are two nice examples where, you know, price has been going up, going down, going up. And then it comes back here. And then actually what it does is it finishes with a pin bar before it moves up. It actually puts a pin bar in there for a rest. But remember, we're, you know, we're in an uptrend. We're, we're looking to trade with the trend. Price comes back down again. And actually, price puts in another bullish pin bar there before it takes off. OK, and that's what we're looking for, to trade pin bars as part of a continuation of a nice upward trend. And that's why we need a little bit of patience. OK, you know, we have a level here. OK, price, you know, it was it was resistance here. OK, it was resistance there. And as we know, once price breaks resistance, it tends to become support. And that's what happened. It came back, got support at that level and launched itself further higher. And that's what we're that's what we're looking to do. OK, and hopefully, you know, on a uh, on a clear naked chart, it becomes much, much easier to see how that's occurring. and becomes, you know, much easier to see what the trend is and see where those opportunities light up to give us that uh, to give us a, an opportunity to be a buyer. So that was pin bars. Let's have a little talk about engulfing candles. All right. As the name implies, OK, it's, it's a simple price action pattern that, you know, is useful for determining reversals. Once again, I always want to use it as a part of a confluence of events. So that means I want a trend in place. I'm looking at a particular level of support resistance and I'd like to see a strong big candle. And as the name implies, all right, OK, it engulfs. It's, it's a candle whereby here we go, a bullish candle. It completely engulfs the preceding candle. All right. The range of it completely precedes it. And on the bearish side, you can see that the range, the high and the low, completely engulfs the candle before. It doesn't happen as often as pin bars. They're much less frequent, but it's far more powerful when it happens at that confluence of events, when it happens at the right place, because it signals a significant change in the trend and the sentiment. And we want to be in a position to, to, to catch that. That's what we're looking for. 
So an engulfing candle is a two candle setup. So you can see that the first candle closes in one direction, second candle reverses and goes in the opposite direction. And preferably to begin with, you know, I like to see big, big, strong bodies. I don't like to see, you know, lots of wicks on engulfing candles. I like to see a very strong candle. So we can see here there's a couple of very strong bullish ones. And sort of whereas, you know, the, this one is is a weaker one. And whilst it does engulf, I like to see a big, strong body. That's what gives me, you know, a uh, far more uh, a confidence in that in that particular price action uh, trigger. On the flip side is the bearish one. Once again, I just want to see big, strong candles. So that's what I want to see. That get, That's what gives me confidence. So we looked at pin bars, we looked at engulfing candles. Now have a look at inside bars. Once again, it's a simple price action setup, sets up on all time frames, and it's on all instruments. Okay, once again, remember what I was saying right at the start about price action trading is all about being time frame and instrument agnostic. If you uh, like your Japanese candlesticks, okay, sometimes it's called the harami. You'll hear people talk about it, but realistically, it's an inside bar. And, and not surprising as the name implies, it's almost the uh, it's the opposite of an engulfing candle. Whereas engulfing candle, the range of it engulf the preceding one. An inside bar, the high and the low of the bar is fully within the range of the preceding bar. Why is that useful to us? Why does that import? How can that help us trade? I want you to think of it like an organism breathing. OK, just think about yourself. All right. Think about humans. What we tend to do with everything is we surge, then we rest, then we surge again. Think about that. You know, whenever you do some exercise or when you're working day, you know, you work, you surge during your working day, then you rest overnight and then you surge again the next day. And the markets like that markets are made up of people. And the inside bar is the rest element in the market. OK, it's where, you know, the market has taken a little bit of a breather and now we're expecting it to surge. And it's catching that next surge is what we're looking to try and do. So here's some inside bar examples there. You can, as I said, you know, it's very, you know, as the name implies, OK, we're looking for the range to be completely within the bar before. That's what we're looking for. The one on the far right, it does because you can see the range of it you know proceeds outside the mother bar you'll hear it's sometimes called the, the the mother bar okay if that's the way you like to talk as always a couple of ways to trade them first one is part of a pullback in an existing trend which is what we're going to focus on or you can also look at it as part of a breakout into a new trend which you know we is a is a uh, is a is a well it's a webinar all of its own and and actually you will have seen that you know if you look at the uh, webinar archive and you speak to your account representatives they'll be able to give you you know uh, some other uh, webinar examples that we've done, you know, trading just particular inside bars that will actually help give you uh, even more detail than I can uh, talk about this evening. But, you know, you can look at a chart. That, I think this is a weekly chart I just pulled up of. I think it might have been Pound Aussie or something like that. You can see that, you know, inside bars happen. They occur and actually they give us opportunity. OK, it's that market surge, rest, surge again. And that's what we're looking to do surge rest surge again and we're looking to capture the end of the rest when the market gets ready to surge again and that's what we're looking to do as part of our uh, simple trading ideas so what we're looking to do you know a little bit like you know pin bars okay we're looking to trade them as pullbacks in a trend now if you you know if you want to put stuff on your charts you might want to possibly use um, some uh, moving averages to define the pullbacks if, if you wish there's a general rule, okay, especially on the longer term charts, you know, especially when we see good trends, you'll be able to identify when there is a you know small pullback, an inside bar at the end of the pullback, and that gives us that opportunity to bang. This is the rest. I want to be able to catch, you know, when the dominant trend re-exerts itself, all right, you know, in, in terms of being able to capture that. It's all about that. Market surges, it rests, it surges again, and that's what we're looking to do. We just want to capture the end of that rest. That's that's our uh, that's our opportunity to be uh, to you know to to take the trade, and that's all we're looking for. So they do work best in trading market inside bars within within consolidated uh, markets. Set, tend to be uh, you get tend to get lots of fake outs. So once again, it's that step two, just to find if there's a trend. If there's a trend, you can work with it. If there isn't, leave it. Go and find a chart where there is a trend. Remember. You know, this is all agnostic. So, you know, you know, you can look at it on gold. You can look at it on Bitcoin. You can look at it on, you know, platinum. You can look at it on the on the Dow Jones. You can look at it on, you know, pound dollar. OK, it works across everything. And what we look to do is, you know, just look to use it as a continuation signal. That's what we're looking to. We're looking for the dominant trend to re-exert itself. And we're trying to capture that. And that's what we're looking for. 
So just to remind you, just to finish off, I've got a few minutes, which I'll, I'll stay on because I appreciate we had a, a, you know, a few problems with the, um, with the audio there before. And I, I do apologize uh, for that. But, you know, here we go. It was just very, very simple. Step one, define levels of support and resistance. Two, define the trend. Three, wait to see how price reacts at those particular levels. And what we look for is we look for some candlestick signals, some nice price action triggers at those levels, like a pin bar, an engulfing candle inside bar. And that can actually give us our trade idea. And as you develop and understand your, your trading better, you can also see, you know, is that part of a much bigger chart pattern? And as I say, that's something for a uh, for a future webinar for us. So in conclusion, price action trading allows you to ditch the distractions and focus on the only thing that matters, price. It makes it easier to make trading decisions because you're not getting overwhelmed, all right? You're not looking at a chart with 20 different indicators on that is just confusing you, okay? It's just very clear, very simple. To begin with, we're looking to find a way to trade in the direction of the main trend, normally on a little pullback, maybe using a pin bar or using an inside bar or even an engulfing candle, all right? We're looking for a confluence of events. We want to see price at particular levels of support and resistance. And then we see these price action triggers. Let's have a quick look at the chart. We've got the last few minutes. If you'd like to stay with me, I appreciate that. You know, we're 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 going to overrun just a, a little bit, but you know, I'm I'm happy to do that. I, as I said, I appreciate I appreciate we uh, a little bit of problem with the audio. Then I, I do apologise. The the internet jumped a bit as on bit as on the backside there, but we'll have a little look at a couple of charts. Okay, just to give you a little bit of an example of how we would look at doing this on our uh, on our own particular uh, on our own particular charts. Go for it, says Hans. Great, of course. Thank you, Hans. All right. Well, so if you just bear with me a moment, I'm just going to try and switch across to the uh, the charts. They should be uh, up and running. So, uh, as I said, bear with me and let's see if we can get these up and uh, have a have a quick look at them for us. Super. Okay. So. Um, Hopefully, can uh, can you all see uh, can you see my charts now, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, hopefully you can still hear the voice. Okay, hopefully you can just hear the charts. Just you know you can see them uh, see them in front of me. That's just uh, MetaTrader Four there, Value Trades uh, MetaTrader Four here. That you know very ubiquitous and a great little platform to to start out with the trading. Hopefully you can see them all nice and loud and clear. Okay, so uh, Desiree and Hans say yes, uh, that's great, brilliant. OK, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's uh, nice to be able to know that uh, you can uh, all you can all see what uh, you can see what we're, uh, we're talking about. So uh, here, you know, this this is oil. OK, so, um, you know, you know, remember what I was saying. OK, when it, when I open any chart, OK, I'm just going to open any chart here. OK, this is, you know, oil here. OK, just uh, on the monthly, uh, you know, what I'm looking to do is what's my step one. All right. Remember what I was saying to just draw in my levels of support and resistance. So, you know, and the fractals can help me there, hopefully. You can see, you know, there's we've had, you know, there's a few fractals there at the uh, the kind of at the at the bottom there. Okay, when I see, uh, as I said, you know, there's a touch there, there's a touch there, there's a touch there that starts to give me an indication that, you know, you know, for whatever reason, that level, you know, forty two dollars is is a little bit interesting. Okay, and and, and the interesting thing with uh, with oil at the moment is that, you know, it, you know, we had at the end of last year. Hopefully, you can see that's that's a very clear trend there on the monthly chart, isn't it? You know, we had a bottom. We actually had a bit of a an inverse head and shoulders pattern there. That that is that step five that you know we'll talk about in a future one. Okay, part of a bigger bigger chart pattern, you know, and and we had a launched ourselves up from you know about forty two up to about sixty four. So we've seen today. You know, even I as a trader. You know, I'm surprised that I, you know, I thought we would probably just see, you know, oil middling around about between 35 and 50, you know, for a good while as as, as the world moves more and more towards renewable energy sources. But uh, somebody's had a somebody has had a very different idea about that, and that is what we've seen. So let's go down. Let's have a little. Let's have a little look there. Okay, we you know, had a look on the uh, the monthly chart and. Uh, now look in the weekly chart and I'm looking for, uh, you know, are there any more particular levels that sort of stand out to me that as, as, as being of interest? And the thing is, when you start at the monthly chart and you go down, you start to realize that actually, you know, the, you know, these, these particular, you know, the, the levels that they, they carry on through. Okay. And the, the great thing about the, uh, the MetaTrader platform is that as you draw a level on, you know, a monthly chart, you can see the, you know, the red dotted lines. That's how, how I have them. You can have them, you know, as, as big or as strong or as weak as you like, you know, you can see that carry through and hopefully you can see, you know, you know, I talked about uh, uh, earlier on in our session here. Okay. 
that um, you know about how when I start to see particular you know particular lots of uh, fractals at at particular sort of areas. Okay, there we go. Just that starts to give me an interest that you know for whatever reason fifty five dollars fifty five dollars that region there. Okay, was interesting because every time think about it, every time price got up, it got pushed back. Every time price gets up gets pushed back okay it's um you know it's it's telling me that you know there's the you know it's, it's the, those predators are there okay right those predators are there am i right okay and those predators are there right until the moment they're not okay and what do we know what do we know we said you know i want to see how price reacts at particular levels well oil it broke through 55 and it closed very strongly and this is where we start to get interested isn't it because what actually happens is price pushes up a little bit here and then it actually comes back, all right? It comes back, and that sort of a level which we'd identified, that level, you know, which once was resistance, now becomes support. And hopefully some of you can see that, you know, what sort of uh, candle pattern do we have there? What price action pattern do we have there? But, you know, we have a very nice, very nice, uh, you know, bullish pinball. We've got a good wick down. So think about it. Think what happened actually had to happen there. Price pushed all the way down. But it got pushed up, which means more and more buyers came into the market. Buyers wanted to be buyers there. Okay, buyers wanted to get off the sidelines, get into the market there. And what happened is, you know, that price then just moved up. Okay, price has just moved up. But that wasn't the end of it. Okay, that wasn't the end of it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we can see that price moved on there a little bit. Price pushes up, and it then actually comes back a little bit. And what do we have with the, the particular candle here? Okay, there we go. Just draw it there. What did we have with that little particular candle there? Well, there we had we had an inside bar. So you know we have uh, we had a pin bar here. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a better trader than I am an artist. So uh, please bear with me on that. Okay, there you go. So we had a pin bar there after prices you know come through that particular important level. Price has pushed off. It's like almost like a springboard. It's sprung off that 55 level. It's gone forward, and then a couple of weeks later, it comes back a little bit. OK, we have a little bit of a pullback and there we see that we have the inside bar. And what happens is price breaks through that and it's continued north again. And in fact, you know, we have a we have a I think I just need to clear it down. But I think we have another, you know, a little pin bar. i uh, sorry, another little inside bar there that formed there. OK, so, you know, as we went through another level that we identified earlier, not not a particular surprise that we just clear these drawings off for you. It might make it a little bit easier for, for people to to see. So here we go. So actually, you know, I, uh, I, I, there we go. I stand that that wasn't an inside bar because you can see its nose is just just a smidge higher. And it's just a smidge higher. But the interesting thing is, is that you know, you know what uh, what I you know would want you to take note of is the fact that for whatever reason, you know, we, we had already drawn in that sixty four, you know, call it sixty three, sixty four level there. Okay, price broke through it. Okay, and then price came back and retested it. You know, maybe if we looked at. Uh, on a uh, on a shorter time frame, you know, there might have been opportunities there to to, to work with that. OK, it becomes, you know, much, much, uh, much, much simpler. Here we go. Let's have a look at what's oil doing there. OK, and boom, what are we, you know, boom, what happened? <laughs> what happened there? OK, hopefully you can see there on the uh, on the daily chart once price had uh, once price had uh, actually got through that level. OK, it came back. OK, and it gave us, you know, it actually gave us, you know, a couple of uh, a couple of nice bullish pin bars before price moved off for the next few sessions northwards in what was already an existing trend. All right. We can see that that trend was there. It's nice. You can see that you had, you know, a couple of little a uh, couple of little uh, pin bars there as you went. You know, there was also an inside bar there. OK, as it, uh, as it, you know, as it broke out, OK, as it broke out of those highs, which is we didn't really touch on that tonight because there's it's such a big wider area. But hopefully you can just see by just keeping your charts very very clear less is more all right very simple you start to you know with a little bit of practice a little bit of work just a little bit of analysis you start to identify where there are the opportunities to to sort of you know to take these trades to sort of see whether you know naked price action charts are give you you know great opportunities and i and i hope that uh, you can you can start to see that so that that was oil and let's uh, let's keep an eye on it let's um let's you know let's uh, you know let's look at somewhere actually where it's been it's been a little bit the opposite where it's actually you know it's helped us to, to identify you know prices have been you know uh, consolidating so this is the euro sterling 
doing on the weekly chart. I, I trade euro sterling a lot. I spend a lot of time in the UK and Europe, so I keep I'm very sensitive to it. I keep an eye on it. This is the weekly chart, and and actually what you know what we identified. Hopefully, you can see there is that um, there's a lot of uh, you know there's quite a few fractals. I'll just make them a little bit darker, so maybe you can see them a little bit uh, a little bit clearer. Here we go. Da, 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 indicator lists. I'm just going to make them a bit darker so they can stand out. Okay, so for me, I don't I don't really need them. I can you know I can my eyes are trained, but you know I appreciate for new people that might be uh, you know a little bit of uh, might be a little bit uh, uh, helpful to see that. And you can see in the weekly chart, you know we, I've talked about it in some of my uh, training. This this kind of like 87.50 level just you know has been quite significant, uh, quite a significant stronghold. If I go down to the daily charts, all right. We can see hopefully that uh, you know that we had here we go let's just draw some uh, lines in here okay you know realistically what we you know what we have done for us uh, since you know since realistically you know last summer is you know we've had this kind of level right just this like 8750 it's 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 sort of uh, it's kind of um, <laughs> it's tried to uh, a couple of times it's tried to sort of trick us in there okay whoops there you go as i said i'm not an artist you know, it's got just a little bit beneath it, but every time it's got beneath it, it's come back up above it, okay? It's come back up above it. When it's, you know, when it's uh, come up to the sort of the top of the range, which is, remember we talked about sort of psychological levels, people being, uh, human beings being quite, uh, you know, maybe lazy is one word, maybe just being um, uh, just natural there, you know, just if I draw in there, okay? Just move that up to, there we go round about there you go it's just under 90 every time price came up to came came up to that psychological level of 90 you could see that it got uh it got pushed down for a while okay it got pushed down and what did it get pushed down with on there well there was a you know there's a pin bar there here we had you know uh here we had uh, you know that was kind of a, a pin bar but it was also an engulfing candle at the bottom here we had a, a sort of a reversal pin bar this is a, a, a kind of a, a pin bar okay we had a good wick on it but uh, it moved its way up but you know, here you know we price tried to push down, but but came back up right. And as I said, you know what we're not looking to do is we're not really looking to trade consolidated ranges. Although these ranges were big enough to do to begin with. What I just want you to be able to do is to see, you know, when you can look at a chart and just identify that that range is consolidated. You know, you can quite simply put it onto the back burner of your watch list. You know, just like I'm not interested in euro sterling at the moment until it breaks out to a new trend. When it does that. Well then, you know, then clearly I'll be I'll be interested to it. And you know what we had here is you can see that ninety level there. Okay, that you know that level was significant. Once price broke through it, and it broke through it on a on an engulfing candle, it pushes up a little bit, it comes back down, and then what we have is a simple pin bar there. Okay, and a simple engulfing pin bar there before it moved up again. So hopefully, you know, just a little bit of an idea of, you know, markets can be consolidated. Remember what I said, you know, sort of charts, you know, good trends stand out. You know, they, they leap off the page. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to sort of, you know, uh, to, to, to really make it that hard on yourself. If you're looking at a chart and you can't work out if it's a trend, I'll give you a bit of advice. It probably isn't. OK, good trends. OK, good trends. They, you know, they finish off on, on uh, they finish off, you know, they're very clear. They, and uh, as I'll show in a few examples here. You know they're very clear in terms of you know, they end very nicely with uh, with some you know some good action. So prices is, is actually still you know I would still probably consider that in a bit of a, a you know a bit of a consolidation period there. But you know a couple of little consolidation blocks there. Now admittedly it does kind of you know start to break out there. There's big engulfing candle, but at that time it's not that's not really you know that's not really of interest to us. Not really a start. But when I get to this one here, okay which is a you know it's a higher low all right it's a higher low not only that it's an engulfing candle as well all right and then you know a couple of candles it's also you know showing that it becomes a fractal as well 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 then you know here we have it here we have you know now we're starting to get a now we're starting to be of interest we have the level here it breaks through it there again okay, closes above it goes up a little bit and it comes back what does it come back to well comes back to a very simple pin bar there okay you can see a pin bar and bank price pushes off yes we get a very nice reversal pin bar there but you know what are we trying to do ladies and gentlemen we're trying to trade with the dominant trend and what we can see here as we get higher highs and higher lows is that we're in an uptrend and that's just forming another higher high so when price falls back a bit it puts in another pin bar there and what do you know off it shoots okay off it shoots again 
and that's what we're looking now of course my my drawings have made that a little bit you know a little bit uh, a little bit scratching a little bit uh, you know a little bit uh, thing but you know when you know when you remove everything which is the whole idea of uh, naked trading is that actually you can see that and you can hopefully you can see that very very clearly okay you the thing you'll say is just you don't need to make this harder than it is we, we always overcomplicate it keep it nice and simple okay i'm looking here we've looked here at daily charts four hourly charts monthly charts weekly charts okay but you know this would look across all time frames and all instruments so you know take a task away ladies and gentlemen go and have a look at the charts you're using at the moment uh, you know are they cluttered with just 20 different indicators all right try try it just a little trading challenge for yourself for 2018 for the next month take off everything okay take off everything and just look at it, developing and understanding and building your a your analysis okay being able to look at charts and just analyze the price and then also be able to identify where those you know where we get confluence of events where you know price reacts at a particular you know support and resistance level putting in a price action trigger that allows us to to give us an opportunity to, to buy into the dominant trend so there you go. I, I, I did overrun there, and I, I hope you don't. I hope you don't mind. I hope you found that. Uh, I hope you found that useful to be able to, to go over and do a you know a few extra uh, elements on there. Um, I uh, I apologise for a little bit of that loss of the uh, the the audio halfway through. Every man and his dogs are clearly at home watching uh, e e Emmerdale or EastEnders or logging on of something or other. But I hope you found that useful. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, OK, you can be sure to shoot them across to your uh, account representative. Um, and if you want to watch a, uh, you know, a, a sort of a recording of this, well, then, you know, I'm sure they'll be happy to, to help you uh, with that. As always, I wish you the very best of success with your uh, own trading. And also, you know, I, I look forward to speaking to you in the future of the next few months as we unroll more exciting and interesting trading ideas for you to, to follow me on uh, uh, for the for the rest of the year with uh, value trades so thank you desiree that's uh, that's very kind of you. thank you I appreciate it. desiree says enjoy this very much thanks for explaining it so well we'll definitely try this from tomorrow fantastic yeah good for uh, you're very welcome hans thank you and uh you know yeah i, I said apologize for the audio but uh, eric the recording will be nice as i said by all means you know speak to your value trades account representative they'll be they'll be very happy to help you with that they'll be very happy to answer your questions you know whether it be about price action trading or whether it just be about the the platform whether it be about you know uh, any element of of trading with uh, value trades they're uh, you know they have fantastic uh, customer service and they'll be very very happy to help you with that so, as I said, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your evening, the rest of your, uh, well, the, the rest of the month for the last few hours of it. Uh, good luck for your trading in February, and I, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Many thanks.